having the buffalo back is, it's really hard to say and put into words, but it's really, it's restoring a lot more than the land. Culturally, bison play a big part for a lot of the Plains indigenous people. The majority of the people talked about bison or ini being gone from the land and how it was missing and that we needed to bring them back. The various nations from all over, they signed the Buffalo Treaty about having buffalo restoration back on the landscape. Prior to 2017, the north end of the Blood Reserve was used for the Blood Tribe Band Ranch, an old cattle operation. Leroy Little Bear, who we've worked very closely with on the project, said, hey, why don't we put buffalo out there instead? And so Chief and Council at that time gave their approval. We asked the nation if they would set aside land. We were gifted this beautiful grassland to manage bison on. We were able to get 40 from Elk Island National Park. Bison were taken, I think, two or three months after they were born. Very cold day of February. The whole road back there was filled with cars lined up just to see the bison. We got here probably just before sunset and we released them on the first hoofs at the ground. It was a very happy moment for the nation. Tons of positive feedback from the community. Elders and youth coming together, people in the community coming out. The elder blessing and a few of the ceremonial societies come out and they sang praise songs and just a very joyous moment at that time. Just having them here on the landscape just kind of restores that holistic feeling that we've lost for the past 200 or so years. time ago they used to roam these areas and how massive in numbers they were. And I always wanted to hear that, like the wolves actually running a stampede and all that, just to feel the ground vibrating. They were a cultural keystone. They are basically a walking supermarket. They have your food and your tools and then your clothing and your shelter. You can't have ceremonies in the proper way without buffalo. Colonization, colonialism, colonial policies wiped out the buffalo. It was seen as competition and um, it was seen as our food source. And so it was wiped out purposefully to get us to submit and to open up the land for ranchers and farmers and settlers so that they could settle the land and basically take the land from us and force us to sign treaty. With the removal of Plains Bison from the Great Plains, it severely affected our culture to where we were forced to submit to the colonial and contemporary side of things. It's a very harsh history, and um, but what people don't realize is with the removal of buffalo, it really did affect the land. I was trying to restore the buffalo, we're hoping to reverse those effects. It's a growing movement, the Buffalo Treaty. It's growing annually, the nations that are joining and the international conservation groups. From like our, our friends and partners that have worked closely with Blood Tribe, we've had tons of support. They've evolved here on the landscape since time immemorial, since the last ice age, so it only makes sense that they're fully adapted to this area. They're incredibly strong animals. Seeing what is occurring now that the bison are back here on this grassland. Bison, they have very unique ecological and biological and behavioral traits that make them beneficial to the land compared to other livestock. They're waste products. The urine is very high in available nitrogen, which benefits plants. Well, mostly it's uh, invasive plants and native plant species around the area that we're doing our assessments on. It's just various places around the reserve. 
medicinal plants and traditional plants like wild turnip or moss. The equipment that we utilize is a 30 meter fiberglass tape. Every three feet, we would go along and try to find the different plant species that are within our sample area. So what that does is that we look into that frame and we start to identify the types of species that are there. It's to get a good assessment of what the area is like and how we can kind of move it to where we want it to be in the future. There's already lots of other species that come across because of the changes that they've made with their, well, for example, their dung. I've witnessed birds like in my area that I haven't ever seen on the blood reserve before. We use the bison dung as our bait. We just collect a good chunk of it, then we bring it back out to their pitfall traps. Beetles gradually crawl in, they're smelling it, and they all drop in. We do pitfall traps, which is basically a way of us finding out the different types of insects that like to travel around the bison paddock. For our project, we wanted to keep them 100% as natural as we can be in order to see what was this ecosystem like. The long-term goal is to have a self-sustaining buffalo herd that we will just continuously utilize.